Sana African Textiles, Europe's finest and top quality. Hello and welcome to today's edition of uh, the entertainment show on Zip TV. Good afternoon to you all viewers of Zip TV. Uh, in fact, today we are getting a very important personality as far as the musical industry in Ghana is concerned. He is young though, but he has informed, he has effected some change in the musical industry in Ghana. Jeff Quay as the name that is hidden in a box, but people know him as JQ. He is here today to tell us much about the reformation that has gone through uh, the Ghanaian music industry. He was the first to digitalize Ghanaian music in Ghana, right from the Jama and Palungu to now this the Azonto. So Jeff Kwe will be here and he's here in fact with me to tell us much about the transformation and reformation of the Ghanaian music and where it has gotten now. He has seen a lot of reforms in the Ghanaian musical industry. He's here and he's done a lot for the industry. As I said earlier on, um, when you look at a young man who has attained such credential and he is popularly known as the king or the greatest musical, uh, uh, RM, uh, the musical industry, he is popularly known as a bigger engineer and a composer. He can also write as well. He is a producer, engineer of all time as far as hip life and the transformation of our traditional music is concerned. So I cannot tell you much about him but he has to do that and we will delve in depth into the Ghanaian music industry and what people think the mediocrity of some music aspect of our culture. He will explain if it is mediocre or it is a professionalism as we may know it. And I'll also have in the studio Spinto, who is also a young Guinean based in the UK. He is a very good guitarist and he is now associated with a rock as popularly known in the diaspora by the young people. He will be one of the greatest guitarists as we had Kiki Jan who was then playing for the Queen. So without much I do, I will just give you a gist about him. JQ, uh, he studied a lot and his interest was our Greek and economics. He should have been an economic economist or an agricultural engineer, but he preferred being the musical engineer and a producer. He's here with me this morning. Jay, you welcome to London. Yes. Uh, as I said earlier on, you've been uh, very instrumental in the Ghanaian music industry, but I would like to know the genesis of your journey, right from where you started till when you laid your hands on the digital uh, boards to create music with your own sound. Uh, okay, um, thank you once again. I think as far as uh, my career, as I'm saying, started way back in uh, 1994. I was then in, uh, you know, preparing for my own level in Wesley Grammar. Uh, that was when uh, a friend of mine who celebrated his birthday and, you know, someone gifted him a piano, a very small piano. His name is Nana Sapmo uh, in Ubuashi, Ogo, where I grew up, you know. And that was how I came close to music. I saw the piano and I fell in love with the piano, you know. So from there, my church at the time, that was Assemblies of God Emmanuel, noticed my talent. They, you know, they pushed me into um, furthering it at Oriental School of Music in Adabraka, which is, is no, the school is no more now. But so from there, I moved to um, Resurrection Power. And living bread because daughters of glorious Jesus were their table sisters. I moved there because, like, when you look at the church, I mean, it basis was music, you know, so far, who started with table sisters, so it basis was, was music. And I didn't want to go the band way where I would go and join a band like, you know, Myra said, because of the, you know, the lifestyle that people suppose, you know, musicians have in the band. And since I was a Christian and from the Christian background, I decided to stay in the church. You know, so that was how. So, but for Nana Sapon's intervention by giving you, bringing a piano to your house, yeah. and you spend day yeah, and night and on the piano. the piano, so did daddy experience that, no, this boy wouldn't do the economy. Yeah. He will not become an economist, but rather become a music engineer. Yeah, did actually, he realize that? Yeah, I was staying with my mom who realized that I come from a family where, you know, I'm the first boy from the whole extended family. We don't really have even like ladies, women, my cousins are all girls, sisters, aunties, no uncles. 
So I was like the first boy, and my mom then she's now retired. She was then working with Snake, and my dad was with um, the psychiatric hospital who is deceased. May so rest in peace. You know, so my mom noticed what I was trying to do, and she had a big problem with me. So there are times she, would, you know, I'm not that tall. My mom will take the piano, put it on the wardrobe because she knows there was no way I could reach it, just to you know discourage me from being who I am today. But hey, you know. I, I kept fighting somebody may say what god has put in together nobody yeah, no can put <laughs> but let's let's look at it from this way uh when you were having the the obstacles or experiencing some obstacles from mommy mm -hmm. did somebody in the family encourage you to pursue your hard desire career yeah it was um i think my my late grandma she you know she is not really educated but she supported what I was doing because they could all see I have so much love for it because when I go to school you know my the time I have literature in school is the same time I have music and I have to choose between the two and I, I have so much love for literature but hey I will run from literature and I'll go to music so my grandma was you know she was like she was the one who was okay but apart from that my dad my dad my mom everybody was like you know you have to do this school. So after the Living Bread, uh, when you joined the Living Bread mm -hmm. and playing the musical instrument there, what again motivated yeah. you to go into your own entrepreneurial okay. What happened in Living Bread um, was this, like there is a guy in the band, like in the church band, called Fred Che Mensa, popularly known as Fredima or Fredima Studios in Adabraka. He was manager of Shell, Ringo in Adabraka, but he owned a studio. And he also played keyboard and I was playing keyboards in the church. So seeing my interest and my love and probably how good he thought I was with the music and my creativity in the choir, he was like, I have a studio, you want to have a look one day? I'm like, whoa, what's a studio like? I've never seen the studio before. Thanks to Fred Chimisa, wherever he is. You know, he took me to the Adabraka around, you know, PTC, there about it. That was the first time I saw keyboard connected to computer. I've never seen wow. it before. Seriously, and when I saw it, I just didn't want to go out, I didn't want to go home, I didn't want to do nothing, I just want to spend day and night in the studio, so I could also make my own music, because in the church, we play, you know, copyright, songs that people sing, we will learn as a yeah. choir and musicians and perform it, but in the studio, you get to produce something, and some choir and some musicians get to listen to what you have done, and you know, learn it, so to me, it was like, I'm like, uh, I just fell in love with it. So that was how it all started in Fredima Studios where, you know, I, I started. Then, you know, the guitar music had been introduced to the industry where, like, when I say guitar music, what I mean is, like, the infusion of technology like computers has been yep. introduced. Because then it used to be live band. If you want to record, you have to move the whole band to Ghana. For yeah, school. Alan, uh, did you do that of analog music before yes, you I went to analog, digital? Yes, I did analog. I did, uh, you know, uh, uh, what it is is, Analog music, you know, digital music trying to incorporate some some bit of analog. But analog music is where you see a whole band in a studio and everything is recorded analog where you see a mixer board console. After you record everything, you mix everything like outboard stuff, everything is outboard. Effects are outboard. That was what I was doing. Because from Fredima Studios, I up oh, Fredima Studio was like a demo studio. So what it means is songs that we produce they have to go to a bigger studio before we come to radio. Our songs can go on radio. And the biggest studio of the time was CHM. And everybody knows CHM who made it popular was Zab Malik. Hey Zab, wherever you are, so much respect. And Zab is like somebody I also grew up listening to his music. So that was where Zab left CHM and they came for me from virtual. So in CHM, I was actually working on songs that would go to radio now not songs that will just be hidden there and have to go through some transformations so it was a chf that I so got. how long did it take you to understudy in fredima studio before you were moved to um, chf in fredima studio i was already with the keyboard so like understanding the whole process where we use computers and stuff it didn't really take long like four five six months so do you tell us did you have a former teacher or somebody that took you through in all Freddy this process studio. in Freddie yeah, Studio. Fred he the took you through yeah, he all those processes. Like how to then the popular software for recording music on the computer. The Atari computer was the first ever computer introduced into the production of music in Ghana. In the world, right. Atari computer. 
And then the software that was popular at the time was Notator and Keybase. But Notator was more popular. So he taught me how to really open. I've never used computer before. He was like, this is computer. This is how you log in into this black and white thing. So that was, he taught me everything, how to record the music, how to fix a microphone. Even though it was a small studio, eventually had everything that the bigger studio had, it. you know, the whole conception was mm. So Fred Chemisa was the one who taught me. So after joining the CHM studios, mm -hmm. so in CHM, that what, was what happened? <laughs> Were you mastering music yes, in, in CHM? Yes, CHM. I went to CHM in 1997 because I completed um, my, my A levels in 1997. In 1997, I went to CHM. I was when I moved to CHM. So in CHM, I had a chance to record my, you know, to write from production, production as doing the beat. Recording as recording the artist, mixing my own sound for the first time in CHM. I was given the opportunity by. And who was that artist that you started I'm with? They say that is Booba. The very first album was Smokomi Kekina. That was a big song in Ghana. You know, I didn't know it was going to be big. You know, and well, after doing the whole song, the whole album, and I had the song on. That was my first time I heard a song. I, you know, finish everything. Your own video. creator. I was like, you know, I was like jumping here over here. So my first song to ever come from CHM that I engineered everything was Kubak uh, uh, Comic Ken. Then after that, around the same time, I did VIP's first album, Rana Sound. You know, these were things I did analog. I mixed them on the console. I recorded them on the a that machine. Nothing like computer where you sing into the computer nowadays. All the effects on the computer just plug-in, we don't do that, we have to, I tune everything myself. Welcome there, well, uh, listeners, viewers, you are seeing live in the studios of Zip, uh, Zip TV in London. I am here with uh, Jeff Quay, popularly known as JQ. As you can see, you listen to more music, you hear JQ in the music. But if you want to join in the conversation, you can call the studio line 02032 if you are calling from abroad, it's plus two two, uh, zero two plus two two three, two zero three two nine zero nine three one nine zero. You can call in and share your views as far as this program is concerned. And JQ is still with me in the studios doing it, telling us how it all started. This is live in Zip FM, Zip TV studios. JQ. The modernization of the Ghanaian music from analog to digital. I want to know which of them encourages artistic value of a production. Is it the digital or the analog? You have gone through the two. I've gone through the two, yeah. I, I came to the industry where analog was paving with digital. And if you study, um, if you look into, you know, digital recording, you know, all the things that make that the apparatuses, the paraphernalia in digital recording, you realize that all digital recording wants to do is to do what analog does, but in a more simple way, in a more smaller way, in a more not too hard way. You know, that is what digital, um, as far as the recording of music is, is uh, my field is concerned. And when it comes to, you know, the arts of it, like where arts, like you're saying, are really encouraged or really come to fall, I think we all know it is the analog music. Because it is only with analog music that you can get a real guitarist in your studio, that you can get a real trumpeter in your studio. So what we are doing now, you know, all the time, the upgrades that we keep getting in digital recording is upgrades that will make our music sound like analog you know upgrades where we can incorporate you know some form of the analog recordings into what we do so a, digi a typical digital recorded music is a music where everything was done with the keyboard the drums was probably samples the bass guitar like everything that you hear like a song like uh, amuka woman that i produced for the epic is a typical digital recording castro digital re re recording miss girl 16 years all Lumba, all the songs I did for them, for concern, they were all digital recordings. But what we do is, when we do it and we want it to go a little analog, that is where we have the arts all involved, like feeling the beauty of uh, uh, live music. Then we call the likes of like Pinto, a guitarist, 
will come and do some session here. We call like a trumpeter so that we raise the trumpets from the keyboard, come and play. Mm. We call like a conkaris. So when you hear the music, even though it was digitally recorded, that a whole live band session wasn't put in studio to record, mm-hmm. you would think, oh, this sounds like live. So with the transformation of, you know, digital from analog, that is how far it is coming. So data recording initially killed analog recording, which, you know, saw most of our musicians relegated to the back. All they could do was live band music. They couldn't go to studios anymore because you go to a studio, you see it's a keyboard, and then you come up from the studio, you hear drums, bass, and everything. everything. I remember somebody asked me, Oh, I'm coming with that trumpet. Pam, 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 pam. Who is the trumpeter who played? I'm like, I did everything. He was like, You know, he's a little old fashioned. How can you do that? You know, and he asked, How can you do that? I'm like, That is what guitar recording does. So, analog recording is, I think, what we are trying to incorporate into what we do as data and that is what softwares that keep coming in the in the digital world trying to make it sound and make it look like but what, what, when we look we listen to certain music that uh is being played in ghana mm-hmm. and we hear it here mm-hmm. in the diaspora mm-hmm. uh we think like in fact if you had gone a little bit of analog that mm-hmm. could have even created mm-hmm. more employment because mm-hmm. a music can be played by a, a music is played by a band, a band yeah. and a band consists of a lot of uh, people yeah. playing it yeah. so if we get them doing that that would have get, uh, generated some form of some employment form. and create a job for other people to do mm-hmm. so why do we insist or why are we bent on let me let me react. digitalizing our music okay. industry let me react to that you know when I got into the in music industry, I saw record companies, I saw music publishers, I saw Supercars Records. It was like a record company, all it does is executive producer and artists and probably distributed. I saw Abib Records, I saw Precise Music. These record companies are mentioned and no more. Over the period of time, all these people perished. So the artists, the musicians, they have to record in other ways. With or without, without record companies so the budget is low these were businessmen now are uh, these artists have to finance their uh, l- let me let me ask why do you think that all these record companies were fed out from the system uh, you know um, i think uh, the way our industry was structured at the time the way the industry was structured you know, no laws regulating piracy and all these things you know in, uh, distribution of funds the synthesis wise are between artists and and executive producers and managers. You know, there were no regulations and structures in place. So the industry at the time was such that it was a record company, you know, starts, becomes successful at a diminishing rate. You go up, but whilst you're going up, the curve is going to be like economics. Economics, yeah. 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 (laughs) The little economics I know. It's going to come down. So we saw record companies from nowhere, they became so popular. You know, they start with one artist in like a year, so many artists, in two, three years, shoom, shoom. And then that was what happened. You know, the regulations that were not in place and so many other things that started killing the industry, like Ayola and other things, made that um, executive producers decided to you know, they were business producers with business, but they had like two or three businesses going. So if music is killing the fans, they like, so all the publishing companies, you know, like about 80%, all kept going down and this were a must think these were publishers or companies that were into hit life high life were their publishers were because the lumbers and crew were still doing what they were doing but hit life those companies that came that started supporting hit life they all have to all right now uh you have seen a lot of transformation in the music exactly. industry and you've gone through most of them you were part and parcel of them right from analog to digital right from palongo uh jama through to nowadays azonto uh you've recorded the old and the new together you fused them together now what was the motivation or what encouraged you to change the old music that was being played and listened to by the old people and fuse it with a new generation that also encouraged the youth to keep on listening to the old music. What encouraged you to do okay, that? This is what happened. Um, in the year 2000, um, you know, when hip life, high life is older than hip life. Hawaiian music is older than high life. It was Hawaiian, it was high life, then it became 
we came to hit for So there was a wider market for highlight because people who consume the highlight music were elderly people, working class, who can afford the cassette, the tapes, the records. Hip life was a, a movement, a revolution for the young, the youth in Ghana, because it was rap. Due to the little highlight, but the, the, core, the, 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 the core of what we do in hip life, when it started in the 90s, when Reggie body, the Rockstone body, was hip hop. So, you know, it was like people were not buying hip life. Students were following it. Students had no money to buy things. That time, downloads wasn't a part of what you do. You can only get the new music on radio or go to shows and watch the ads. You can't afford tapes because they were students. So, and the older people couldn't understand what the young people were doing because the beats that we played at the time all the beats I played before 2000, before 2001, were all hip hop. All the highlights back, the hip hop back in by the time, were all hip hop because of the culture of hip hop and hip hop. So that was what happened. So I sat down and I looked at the whole industry. With your economic lens. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know. <laughs> that is the lens is for the telescope. Right? <laughs> With and economic uh, bifocal. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know, so I looked at this whole thing and I'm like, okay, we can bridge the gap. We can have a fusion. We can incorporate the two. How are we going to do that? These boys will rap regardless. You don't expect them to sing like Pablo, Alaji Gay Pimpon, Bulomet. You don't expect them to do that. So what can we do? We can transform our beats, the production of the beats that makes the song. So I experimented being a gun. You know, I'm like, okay, highlight was already, you know, seen in hip life some way, some other percentage was too. So I'm like, let me try something all new. Good. So coming from the shores of Accra, Choco, I took Plan Logo. Plan Logo is what we do back in Liverpool, do back in the days as Jama. Jama. When you go to the colleges as Jama, that was all we do. You know, so I took, you know, the risk and I'm like, let me try that. A typical high life club in Ghana is Plan yeah. Logo Jama was actually, actually. So that was there was in you the see, those too. those that know the music when they hear yeah. they know the difference there between a typical highlight yeah. and so jam. I'm like okay rather than playing all this hip hop beat let me have the hip hop beat in the song mm. but let me also bring a little jama into it and I experimented that with boom back song I'm going to come wow. I'm going to come I'm going to come that was the first fusion where we have jama ever introduced in Ghana. So when I eat, that was also the first time I started putting my signature in songs because I want people to identify me yeah. to my creativity yeah. and the revolution I brought. When it started, there was a lot of criticism. Oh, what is this? DJs, even who play the music, what is this? What is that? This, that does this guy think he's doing? Where does he think he's going right. with this? You know, a typical guy they try to kill it. But at this music, when controversy surrounds something artistic, it grows. There is no grows. negative publicity. You know, and within a couple of months. I'm going to come was accepted by the by all the men. I'm going to come was consumed by older folks. And I'm going to come became a big song in Ghana. And then at the awards that time, he won about four awards. Just that song. Song. On the hit life category, he won he script a lot of awards. So that was when I saw that this movement is going to work. So I started hating it. Stradinam, George Rams, I started hating it. Uh, all the songs get secreted for for every artist I produce around the time I have to let it go because it has to be loudable and it got extra loudable when people in the gospel folks embraced it and as of now as we speak gospel has not been jammed my high life also embraced it the lumbers the uh, all these people started also playing it and it became accepted by all well viewers you are hearing it live in the studios of zip F zip tv I am here with Jeff Quay, popularly known as JQ, a musical producer and engineer of all time in Ghana. And he is in fact going to the diaspora. He's got a studio in the United States of America and he's here in the United Kingdom to do some job, as you all know. Now we are in a global village whereby everybody, everybody or every soul is trying to go all over the world to encourage or to motivate people to get close to his net. JQ is here today with me in London. But if you want to join in the conversation, the numbers to call is 0203-290-3190. 0203-290-3190. You can also join in. But we'll be going for a quick commercial break when we bounce back. Pinto, 
who also join us on and tell us what he can do with his hands on the guitar but before we go on a commercial break i would like to know uh the transformation from the high life to hip-hop to hip life there were a lot of criticism as i did elaborate on earlier on that people were thinking that the hip life and the hip-hop music do not make sense and in fact some of them doesn't doesn't make any sense at all so as a producer and an engineer do you think that hip life or hip hop hip hop is gone hip life do you start test uh, all right before you go on and i have somebody on the line to share his views with us hello 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 yeah we've lost this call and uh, hopefully he will call back or she will call back the numbers to call is zero two zero three two nine zero three one nine zero zero two three zero two zero three two nine zero three one nine zero you can call in you can phone in and share your join us on this program uh, the afternoon entertainment show on zip tv i'm here with jq uh, jay before i intercepted uh what uh we were talking about mm-hmm. the stand to test of time by the hip life music do you think yeah I think, you pass through of a lot of waters yeah i think um hip life has come along with um feel with genesis you know made some whatever and then now i think it's still also there so for me i think if hip life is really gonna die like it was perceived to be I mean, it would have been dead. All right, uh, let's pick some more calls in the studios. Hello, caller. Hello. 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 Hi, my name is Alga. I'm calling from Westwood Business Park. Yeah. What do you have for us this afternoon? We are oh, hi, you live from Claire in the studios of Zip TV in London. Hello. Hiya. Yes. Can you hear you? Yeah. It's just a quick question. Um, JQ has got stages in Ghana and in America. I'm just hoping to see what next is going to have one in the UK because we've got young OGs coming up and we're looking for people like him to, you know, put up a place like that here in the UK for us. So we just want to know when next he's going to do something like that in the UK. Yes, please, can you tell us because we did not hear what you said. Okay, um, here in the interview... Once again, you lower your uh, set for us, please, and tell us where you're calling from. I'm calling from Westwood Business Park. Yep. Um, um, in the interviews, I've heard him talk about studios in America and in Ghana, and I'm just wanting to ask when he's going to have a studio here in the UK, so young OTs like people here can also try to put something together. All right, and he will tell you if he's going to have a studio here in England so that some of the young artists here can also record and have yeah. the signature of JQ. We thank you very much for your time with us. Tell people to listen to Zip TV online as we give you the best, not only in entertainment, every endeavors of your life. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, JQ, before you even go on, they are asking that having a studios in the United States of America and Ghana, are you going to have a studio in England to record a young artist? Yeah, um, before I, I started making trips to America, then I was making trips to London. You know, I've been here a couple of times and all my trips here was business. Like I record people, I, I collab with um, people who own studios in London because my times here are usually short. It's like going to be my, like my longest visit in the UK in, in, in so many years. And so, like I did, like Justice is one guy I've worked with um, in the past. He's still 
you I did some, some works with um, Kobe in Istam and all that. And exactly, yes, very soon, not this year though, but very soon I'm going to have a studio here in the UK. But I learned uh, now you are going to uh, work with multimedia, uh, mo solar multimedia. Oh yeah, solar, solar multimedia. multimedia. Like presently here now, all my works are going to be with solar multimedia, the recording studio and solar multimedia. That is where all my works are going to be. So until I come up with my own studio, this is the studio where I'm going to do all my recordings. But hey, um, they should watch out my, my studio. Is yes, you're here in JQ, here in the studios of Zip, Zip TV. You can also join in 02032-903190. The numbers again, 02032-903190. Uh, we will go for a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we'll get in Pinto to also join in and share his opinion. As far as music, music is concerned, we have here the producer of all time when it comes to Palongo, uh, Jama through to the Azonto. He's here to give you a wonderful piece that you never uh, forget. You never regret joining in and sharing your opinions or having him done something for you. We'll go for a quick commercial break. When we come back, we continue on the show on the afternoon entertainment show on Zig TV. Stay tuned and do not go away.
Today, as I told you earlier on, this is the show of uh, the entertainment. That is for you. We're doing indigenous entertainment show today, this afternoon. And you'll be continuing every week, every Tuesday between the hours of 12.30 to 2.30 on Zip TV. Today, we featured, we're featuring JQ, Jeff Quay and Abraham Pinto, a guitarist, a young indigenous, indigenous Ghanaian guitarist who is now in the diaspora working with multi, solar multimedia and they are going to do everything for you and they will make sure that your music will be tight that will also sell globally and I have Abraham here with me in the studios Abraham, you're welcome Thank you Good uh, Are you going uh, Latino or are you going rock yeah. or are you still maintaining the Ghanaian Yam Ponsa? Yeah, I think um, I'm a Ghanaian, I would love to do Yam Ponsa things just for, to get it new. Yes. So I mean. But nowadays, the music that has been played, I think they're getting, the, they're getting rid of the Yam Ponsa kind of thing. Pampa, 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 and they are now going the other way. So it's making uh, life difficult for Ghanaian musicians, especially people that will be playing uh, the guitar, the conga, the drums, and everything to earn some money because live shows that gives you money and the analog studio is also the biggest uh, promoter of musician and artistic music in the country so as you are here in the united kingdom you see all music is being played live even on live shows tv shows and other things uh, do you encourage the Ghanaian music industry to go the way you think the diaspora is or the advanced world is doing Basically, I think um, as we Ghanaians and um, Africa, as Af Africans, we have a route that we should follow because you can't do away with your route. The, the high life is a pure Ghanaian thing in which you can't do away with it. A lot of people do say um, jazz is even comes from high life. So that's the root of music. You can't really do away with it. So personally, I think we have to support and the guys coming up. Like I remember of war and those um, people up artists also did a lot of great works with, with the old highlight artists, which is really good. But most part, all of a sudden it's a little bit shifted. But I still think we might need it and I, I support it vividly that we should put our effort in there. Somebody may say that uh, we're talking about the Yam Ponsa here, but I've never heard anything Yam Ponsa. Uh, can you please demonstrate what the Yam Ponsa by using the strings means to yeah. our viewers? Yeah. All right. Okay. So you get a Let's good go. song. Yeah, I want a new a good song. Can you can you give me the time like? Uh, You see, this is the most it's wonderful fantastic. music of the guy. You see, how can you go away with this sunshine music? This is what we call sunshine music. Yeah. You hear this immediately, you hear the strings playing. Mm -hmm. It takes you spiritually. Yeah. It overtakes you. But why do you think that we're getting rid of all these things and come up with something that it does not encourage you, you don't know where it comes from and the only thing that one may understand is unless you are high on certain type of drugs before you enjoy that music. Yeah, like as I said before, um, high life on its own is, is for me, it's really a root of music that um, we need to follow. You don't need drugs to, to feel this thing. I tell you, this is a drug itself. Yeah. When you start listening to it, your whole being feels iry for me. So I think you don't need um, any drugs to, to get you hyped to understand what a real high life music is. I still support and believe you should, should get high life music going like within ourselves and our, and our whole mind as musicians. 
it's gonna go far. How difficult is it for you as you are covering live band mm -hmm. to play the contemporary music like the Azontos, the Niger and all the genres coming from Ghana? Yeah. How difficult is it for you to play, to cover them yeah. when you are playing them it's, on stage? It's, it's still no it's still no it's still not different from what we play because as a musician you cover everything and the world is moving so fast that we 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 thinking we need to modify whatever we're doing but as a matter of fact you can't modify when you're leaving the roots behind yeah. you modify the root so um we're really not just in and playing the azonto the crank whatever and, and everything because we're musicians and personally like i'm a musician and i'm, I'm into music and I'm, I'm the thing is i love doing everything concerning music like you said before, I'm trying to get myself into the rock field, which is really good. Just modifying rock in terms of our life and see how it's going to work out. Probably it might sound a little bit weird though, but it's music and it's all about creativity. So for now, we're really trying to. So, do, do, can you have something done with the guitar? As far as the contemporary music is concerned, some of the contemporary music are concerned. Yeah. So what do yeah. you do for us this just now? Okay, I'll just try to do some few chords of a music that I really love. Oh. Um, but um, I'm not really a good singer, but a good writer. Um, my your hand so, sings, so don't worry. <laughs> let's go on. So I'd love to do play a little bit something that maybe might sound weird, but it's lovely though. All right. Okay. This is coming from the roots yeah. of the young Ponsa yeah. because we, you can hear it, you can yeah. feel it. It's still the and one, four, five thing. It, very good. Um, what is your message to the Ghanaian musicians or the recording artists to stick to the root and do not sway and modernize the root to encourage other world to know that Ghana has a culture that should be emulated? Yeah. Um, Basically, I might say I'm a young artist coming up with my own thing. Um, but like you said, I would love to encourage all um, Ghanaian musicians to stick to our roots and probably modify it. So, you know, when we talk about the world, we have the likes of Yusundo, who's a Senegalese, um, Salif Keita, who's a Malian, who, who are taking the culture of their music worldwide. To so the Hollywood. You know, um, Richard Bonner, um, who is a Cameroonian. Is really doing great in the United, uh, almost all, every part of the world. They're really doing really great job for their country. So I think this is the time, being old or new, we need to stick to our roots, modify it, and then probably take it to the world because we want to hear the likes of the Kojo entries, the Amachi the Days, um, uh, um, the Patomats, including the upwards, the Gurus. Uh, um, the VIP is modifying what we have and taking it to the world. We want to see the support, yes, we want to take them, we want to see them there. Not only as own tool, but still getting our route and then sending it to the world for us. Abraham, hey, thank you very much for with us on Zip TV. And we know that any recording artist that wants to record music when they come to Solar Multimedia or a group of companies, you guys are there to help them achieve their target. Uh, we know you guys will be performing 
very good and wonderfully you are going to do that pretty soon when zip tv is being inaugurated so yeah. hopefully all our viewers will come there one day to see you guys live in performance and uh, we'll go for a quick commercial break when we bounce back um jq jeff quay will also join us in the studio to finalize things but if you want to call the numbers to call is 0203 290-3190 I repeat 0203-290-3190 you can call and share your views with us as far as the Ghanaian culture and the music industry is concerned stay tuned and do not go away Gentlemen, you welcome back to Zip TV, the afternoon entertainment show I have with me, the big man himself, GQ, and the up-and-coming Ghanaian young guitarist, who will soon be called the Kiki Jan, 
and we'll be playing for the queen <laughs> or he'll be playing the big gigs in the diaspora they are here with me to talk about a very important and cultural issues that is all more or less on a bone of contention here that the contemporary music is outwitting the old music without any substance but what we call the uh, hip-hop culture and we've had a lot of explanations from JQ who has seen a lot of transformation in the Ghanaian music and has been part of it right from when he started laying his hands on the piano and getting through to the digital world and his own studios doing things for other people putting his signatures on them JQ uh, the music that preceded the, this program jump on my bonnet yeah. You were the brain behind Jump on My Bonnet, the yeah. instrumentation and everything. Yeah. Oh, Jump on My Bonnet. Mm-hmm. Can, can you can you tell me the the beat and the making of that music? Because it sounds like it's becoming more or less francophone mm-hmm. than your old signature tune of the mm-hmm. Alongo and Jama type of music. So are you now trying to? and uh, revolutionize your old <laughs> all right um, engineering work <laughs> no you know then the dynamics of music you know is seen and walks in and out all the time out of public. sometimes you hear some hip-hop track with uh, the young ponsa on it ah my favorite the yeah, young ponsa yeah you know in the past i've done a lot of songs like that like fusions like where it's supposed to be a highlight but you hear something from Bibi Benin or you hear something from Naija or stuff like that. You know, like a more shine your eyes was highlight but I, I incorporated some Nigerian highlight into what we do as highlight. So how yeah. does that promote the Ghanaian culture? I think everything that you do you want to portray mm-hmm. that there is a dot on mm-hmm. the globe mm-hmm. that is called Ghana mm-hmm. and the type of music that we hear mm-hmm comes from this mm-hmm. part of the world mm-hmm. that is promoting the culture, the culture of the people mm-hmm. and the people mm-hmm. yeah um uh, asking what you say if um let's do a little economics mm. <laughs> i like being economic <laughs> because i'm an economic engineer. okay you see on that skill right yeah if let's say uh, on this skill this is like the yes. demand and supply okay the demand and supply mm-hmm. so let's say supply of music here mm. uh, s1 yeah is is highlight typical Ghanaian highlight mm-hmm. and then s2 is highlight fusion with nigeria. nigeria and then the our demand here is like you have d1 you know like just beneath the uh, above zero mm-hmm. that shows that let's say if uh, we produce songs typically Ghanaian uh, the kind of music demanded would be, um, let's say D1. Let's say D1 is like, let's say, let's say thousand mm. dollars. If there is a fusion, the fusion means we are adding more market people from other parts of the world. But don't you think that is relative to? No, it's not really. Let me let, let me finish. Mm. We are adding more market, more market in the sense that rather than having only Ghanaians or a few Nigerians joining in, joining into the like. To what we do as Ghanaians, we incorporate bits and pieces of what they do in like you know very bits and pieces of what we do. Demand will definitely go up. So we as musicians, in as much as we try to protect the uh, interest of our culture and our tradition and make it priority as far as what we do on the globe, we also look at the market of it. You know, we also want to broaden it. Maybe the more say Nigerians, how did Nigerians invade our music industry? They took our high life that we played. We taught them how to play music. We taught them, and, and now they are selling it back to us. Mm-hmm. But they, they take the beat, like this song they, uh, P Square did with uh, 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 Rick Ross. Mm-hmm. The beat is a highlight beat, but they put their Nigerian accent on it. So it's a fusion, and Ghanaians are loving it. As if they did that song, and the, and the beat is juju. Yeah, so juju. Don't, don't you think that it's just because we have neglected no, no, no. our culture that no. has precipitated? No, 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 no. Nigerians taking no. our beat. No, we also, we also, we also, we've also, we've also stolen from lots of people. Kojochi has been still, excuse me, Kojochi has been doing songs. You know, you think this is a typical sampling from Maxi Priest. Reggae. Mm. Reggae is not what we do, we do highlight. 
when the Lumbe started going abroad and we saw all what jelly cans and shiny clothes, so they said it's now burger highlight. Because now you can tag in the push your head up and That is a revolution for you. You see, so it's not like we are we are you know we are trying to really get what we do at the back and put them at the forefront. But we try to you know broaden what we do and have a wider look. Assume you know used to know is big. Mm. Used to know is 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 bigger because more of bigger. the Senegalese. Listen to what I'm coming to say. He's more bigger outside his country mm. and like you know Europe and America. Used to know is not big in Ghana. Ghanaians no. see Kogentry more than he used to do. As even used to know does his own music and features Kogentry. He's going to have a bigger market in Ghana. I'm not saying he should go around fish, but what I'm trying to mean is incorporating you know talent and culture and genres from other spheres of the world into what you do your scope become bigger you know economics now you wouldn't be looking at it in place anymore what by poker <laughs> no. uh, uh, Pinto, uh, let's see you did play the young ponsan here and the spread was very high so assuming uh Kodendri comes out with the young ponsan and say okay i want you to go to be part of it or i want maybe um are any of the foreign musicians to be part of the music that I'm playing? Don't you think that would rather promote the Ghanaian culture in that particular country or, or promote it on the globe? Rather than saying, I want to be part of this in those uh, country so that I can sing on it and be known by Senegalese. The whole thing that my brother, my big brother said earlier on, I think, is really something that I support a little bit. Because um, the fusion itself naturally brings us together as one people in terms of music. Because it seems like you're not being limited to what one angle of your, your aspect. Like talking about not um, not financially though, but like we fuse in ourselves to other people's country. I was so proud of Kojenshi when he, he featured Freddie Mel. Okay, let me say probably Melway is from uh, mm. Ivory Coast. Not really, because according to Thor's mm. like, you know, Isma. from his man. Mm-hmm. So okay, so yeah. it's it's just still a fusion that was really good, you know. Um I had I, I had a lot of couple of guys out there also fusing deep up. With, with the highlight thing, yeah. hit by thing, and that's really good. It's, it's something that I think it promotes everyone, not you being in the person's country or promoting it, it promotes the music itself and it makes the music itself unique. You know, Richard Bonner went to uh, uh, um, America, um, did a little bit jazz in there, and after I brought it, fused it to their kind of regions. They, you know, they play the six eights, the whatever they play you know their traditional thing and then fuse it now selling wild world they, they still listen to their roots they hear the blues in there as well as the african things so i think it's, it's not really about you promoting your own stuff but, but it's bringing us together as one one go like bob Mali said you know all right uh, <laughs> now uh, we go into the big man here how many artists have you worked with them so far in Ghana? Hello. 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 I, Hello. I can come. Hello. I can give. Yeah. And still more are coming to you. Yeah, and I'm still to work. Coming. Coming. Yeah. yeah, sometimes I hear music on radio, so I'm like, oh. Including stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Music yeah, yeah. is back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like what? Oh, 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 oh. I remember this song. Like, I remember the first time I came here, I went on GH Radio. I wanted to do some Indian music. And Get the song you were playing. You didn't even know I produced that song. Hey, and Tubu Asie, Odo, and the Abutari, Chancelo. I produced that song. I'm not that. Old. Look at that. No, I'm not that. Old. But it, it's a wonderful piece. It's, it's, it's a yeah, wonderful. I'm surprised. You know, I recorded. I've recorded Bulome. I've done uh, culture recording Sandy Kuban and all those people. I've done. I have all that background. You know, I've done all that background. You know, so I can't really affix any amount of like 20 to not I can it's a lot of musicians so now uh, the benefit of the music transformation mm-hmm. that you have been part of it mm-hmm. do you think it outweighs that of the old or the uh, the old folks um, musical expert and what do you propose that Ghanaian government or mm-hmm. the government of Ghana should legislate so that 
musicians benefit from their work even though when they are not playing anymore yeah i think um the older folks like you know those that we know of in the past and like, who were like more into the high life they did a lot you know music goes a longer way to promote our country and what we do sometimes they sing about you know like Choco, they sing about culture in Takrade, so people outside it attracts tourism into our country, you know. But if you look at these older people, sometimes when you go and visit some of these people and you see the kind of lives they are in, and they tell you this is Asimisi who sang this and this and this and this. And this. I'm sure if you should see me in, in let's say I'm 90 years, and they say, Oh, that man there is JQ, he did, you, you should expect to see, you know, in Britain or yeah, like in yeah, the States. Yeah. If you see, you know, a legend like that, it's like you know, a, it's like an old wine. There you go. Yeah. You know, but these people, if you go and look at, not that some people say musicians, um, excuse me, say the way they live, they, 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 you know, they have so many businesses, so they are expending, mm. they are not responsible and all that. But it is not really about that. Mm. Like you said, we don't have re- proper re- like like copyrights. Yeah. You know, like royalties and these yeah. things are not paid to these people. As we speak now, Papobo songs are being played, you know, uh, people from the past, like they are still playing their songs, you know, not only in, in outside the world, but even in Ghana, they are playing it. And then if you go to the Ghana Copyright Association, if you go to the Ghana Copyright Association, you know, to demand uh, 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 your, your, your royalties, as far as copyright is concerned, and as far as what you got, trust me, I can tell you some of the checks they give to these people. They give like 1.5 million old Ghana cities. A year. I'm telling you. Sometimes you go there, no, like on a monthly basis. On a monthly basis. Yeah, like like 50 pounds. So they, they, and this is, and this, is the from, this is collation from radio. They pay to copyright. This is collation from radio stations, DJing and all these people. They pay to these people. And the musicians go there like maybe two, three months, like a copyright. And then they'll give you like, they decide what to give you hmm. so that, what what is the musical uh, uh the association of yeah Ghana right now right now the association with you know with a war in place you know they are trying to bring all these things to fall they are trying to you know put regulations they are trying to put measures in place and then government is trying to support some of the policies that they are doing you know recently government even gave some money to the industry you know to see some you know so if the government will step in as far as some of these things are concerned. They will take us seriously. They will know what we do. Like recently, I I, I imported some equipment from America. You know, we have a tax cut as far as the musicians are concerned. Mm. Yeah. 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 I went there and they said, oh, the tax cut is only on like instruments like guitar and the band. If you bring like a studio speaker and these things, I paid so much money. You understand? And these are things that we import into the country. When we import, we see people living on the streets with talent. We take them home. We give them a job. You know, they also become responsible. And then on and on and on. We give back to society. So if we have to go through all these, you know, things to probably, you know, it is difficult. That's what I mean. So now, what what are you guys doing uh, in terms of lobbying the parliament uh, to legislate laws? that will promote the Ghanaian culture through music and act and uh, act industry, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. music industry mm-hmm. and the film. Mm-hmm. What are you guys doing? Are you coming together yeah, like I'm saying, to lobby parliament? Yeah, like, I'm, like, I'm say, like I'm saying now, with the mm-hmm. new administration we have in Ghana under Musica, you understand? They've tried to, for the first time, I, I went there one time and I saw they were having a meeting with DJs, they were having a meeting with live band musicians, they were having meetings with um, they were meeting people but that was the first time actually ever in the history of ghana music that i saw a meeting of producers and sound engineers <laughs> that was the first time ever <laughs> recent years i've been in the industry for like a decade that was the first oh, time i went there and it was like i saw my other colleagues and we all shared our views on how to so i think they are doing it they are trying to do good we we also know i think we have the music council in ghana where we have the less bakushi Japan. Yeah. And, and 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 messing with him a guy all these guys echo Mika, echo Mika. they are trying to also come you know they are trying to push things so things are happening you know they are recognizing us and they are trying to like up, like the administration of musica they are working in hand with the government government is recognizing them and some 
some form of legislations are being passed, like you said. So I, I you know, it, it's not a short-term thing, but I think in the long term, you know, there's going to be a change, and then we all. Yeah, um, and, and and I also think yeah, um, the record labels that mm -hmm. um, it's been there mm -hmm. have to have a proper look and check, you know, because mm -hmm. some, some sometimes with the instrumentalists, you need a record, you need to play something. And you have to earn your royalties as well. Mm -hmm, exactly. And those things doesn't exist. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That, you that know, is intellectual, is that's called the intellectual property. Let me let me let me let me react to it. What mm -hmm. he's saying yeah. is very true. Yeah. What he's saying is very, very true in Ghana, but mm -hmm. it's about to change. Royalties are only awarded to musicians. The same you know? on the on the CD. Really bad. The producer, <laughs> really bad. the producer <laughs> who produced the beat. The musicians who play, play. like the guitarist, mm -hmm. like the trumpeter, they don't remember. So apart from that, let's say fifty pounds or hundred pounds, they give you. They play this song for years, mm. decades, and then you don't get the performers don't get anything. Only the artists get. So the, me like this, you know how many songs I produce under mm. my belt? So many songs. This Hans has produced so many songs, but I've not won. I've not gotten access to any royalty as far as what i do is concerned mm. so these are some of the concerns we've raised and just you me they are working on it and i know yeah. they are doing it well listeners we are hearing <laughs> things today that uh we've never we're not aware ever mm. so we know things will change but uh, you can also join in with us on in the studios and share your views as far as ghana music industry is concerned the numbers to call is zero two zero three three nine zero three one nine zero the numbers again zero two zero three two nine zero three one nine zero you can also join in and share your views with me i'm here with uh there is a caller on the line hello hello good morning good afternoon I'm, good afternoon your name and where are you calling from my name is Len and i'm calling from london london what do you have for us um, I wanted to ask um, Mr. J. King that, um, I mean, as he's in London, which studio is he going to be recording? All right, J. Q. will tell you. But kindly hold the line. Uh, J. Q., the lady said, which, as you are in London today, which studios are you going to be working in? Yeah, um, I know a lot of musicians have called me, some have emailed me. So, so the studio I'm working in London is Solar Multimedia Group, um, BMG, Black Horse, Muse, Black Horse Lane, Rotham Store, London, and I think the, the, the postcode is E17607. Yeah, so this is the studio and you can also like for information you can go to their website to do the read of solar multimedia.com the read of solar multimedia.com and you know yeah uh, the lady on the line he will be working in solar multimedia group and they are black horse muse black horse road uh black horse lane so if you want to get in touch with him you can call on 0208 531 9251 I repeat the numbers 0208-531-9251. You can call and you get in touch with JQ and you'll be working on your music. Any album that you want to produce, Pinto is also here to play something on it. But don't forget the royalties, we are in England, whereby a radio station is licensed before you can play a song. And you listen to the music in a corporate, a corporate environment. You have to have a license before you listen to any radio station in a corporate environment that holds about 50 people or 50 people listening to the music so we will be working and we will get our commission and we will get our, we will take the royalties as well are you satisfied yes i am satisfied but um also who is the, who is the brand behind solomon media because i heard about um ola olympio who i want to ask mr jq who is ola olympio um, Ola Olympio has 
come a long way. Personally, he is a friend. Mm. 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 Friends to business, to like brothers. You know, he has a background that you know he has. He was into the music industry in Ghana. You know, for music, he went to radio. He worked with radio stations, Channel R in Ghana. He did a lot in Ghana. So personally, I know him. He, he played the guitar back in the days. I still think yeah. he still does. Yeah, really good guitar. Yeah, you, know, so, you know, right when we were growing up, you see this guy as a business guy. Cause hey, in those days in the 90s, he was driving a Zephyr 4. Hey, my yeah. favorite, yeah. my favorite <laughs> guy, my big favorite big guy. guy. And, and you can go on Google or eBay and look at that kind of price now. So Ola, Ola, Ola is a business guy and. That is the kind of guy here, yeah. and he's making things happen. So that is a lot we do. Then again, uh, if you are if you are watching ZTV live, that is the handwork of Ola. Uh, he is working very seriously to put us live on air, and uh, his the business associate is also there. Uh, Zip TV is an associate partners of Solar Multimedia. Therefore, not only your music that can be done here. We can also do a lot for you. You can do your music videos and all that sort of things, including uh, promoting your album and film as well. So if you want to have a film done for you, then you must as well contact us on that same number. Thank you very much for your call. Thank you. You can also call and share your views with us on 02032 903190. Uh, JQ is in the house and Pinto is also in the house. We're talking about the royalties. Uh, we know in this country the record labels are those in charge of the royalties because you cannot play music and go away. You have to go and have album from the record label. Let's take it if you want to have party and it's an organized party or a pub, you want to play music. You have to go to Sony or any Virgin record label, any record label, to go and get the album. You write the this, the, the album for them that I want to play one, two, three songs. If you have that album, let me have it. They give it to you, they charge you. Before you'll be able to play it in your pub or your party or your club. You have to have a license before you play even music in that pub. So at the end of the day, the legislation being supported by the government is promoting the well-being of the artist mm-hmm. not only the singer but those yeah, in the studios the, the promoters the engineers everybody including mm-hmm. the suppliers mm-hmm. it's a chain of production yeah. therefore every one of them must have something so if they don't buy your album and they play it on the radio you don't pay them as we pay in ghana for the song the radio must pay you so what are you guys doing because i've heard something that makes me, makes me sad that if you go and see these old folks that have been able to promote the Ghanaian culture outside they live in abject poverty yeah so like i said you know like um these are some of the things that the new administration is doing like the uh, letters were sent to radio owners in the country because the funny thing too is that if you want to promote your music in Ghana it's very active cost. And you like you know radio, radio yeah. presenters they won't let you do they would rather play Nigerian our our neighboring country Nigerians for free. For free no I but you think this will come and give you a radio presenter for no. you they don't do that. You know but then where to promote their very own artists. So you know we go through hustle to promote songs for it to become hit and popular for my nice to like this is just talking about if you go to a radio station of let's say 10 presenters you you're giving everybody money if it's 50 pounds 50 pounds how many pounds do you spend 500 pounds in one radio station so look at them what the pieces of radio stations we've had over the past few years it's a lot of radio stations can you journey through the whole regions paying payola these are some of the things that kill like i said like record companies and all these people but this administration is doing a very easy put together making them realize the need for them to play our music without necessarily taking money for us and then paying copyright and royalties to this uh, union so that the musicians and like right now performers like yourself can also bend like guitarists like yourself and producers like yourself can also benefit from our sweat so like in the near 10 15 years if we, we find ourselves in different diversity doing some other things or even retired you know our hard own labor will pay off and <laughs> let, let me ask you are you on any uh, social ben- uh, social contribution do you Ghana. do you have oh, 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 yeah, do you Ghana. have your snet card are you Ghana, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. Even, I'm even coming to say like the new government 
and then you are musician now. They are working. I think they didn't even change the scene. So every musician who registers with music and yeah. automatically, yeah. when you retire at 60, so you know some some so yes, I almost forgot that one. Like I then said, I need to get in touch with the president. No, no, our boy is doing good. Uh, 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 and it is in this few couple of years. Yes, like a lot of transformations and reforms. Well, you know, some people like us, in, you know, we can retire early and me and you next time. Yeah. Yeah. Miami, yeah. Miami, yeah. Miami yeah. Beach, you know, yeah. admiring yeah. your favorite cars. Yeah. <laughs> admiring my favorite cars, yes, indeed, uh, the rock stars. Yeah. Their children are dri- yeah. driving the Zephyr 4 and uh, they are driving the old Bentley. That is go. my favorite. Yeah, so, I hope yeah, so next yeah, time the Ghanaian artist son will also be driving his own favorite cars, my favorite cars as well. So you can, we haven't finished yet. You can also call in and share your views with us on 0203 The numbers again 0203 If you want to email us as well, it's info at solarmultimedia.com or you can join us via the Facebook at solarmultimedia.com or Zip TV uh, on Facebook. You can get us on Zip TV and be friends with us and share your views and opinions with us. We'll be having many, many programs, social political programs, of course. This is an entertainment show which will be hosted next time by an entertainer that we are trying to get. Maybe it might be Pinto who will be hosting the entertainment show. Who knows what tomorrow holds for us? Yes, uh, we've got more time to discuss these important issues here. But let's go for a quick commercial break. When we bounce back, we come your way with another one. We'll be asking uh, our dear producer and engineer the another dynamics or how is he going to change his trend of production. Is he, does he have anything in place to change the trend of production as the musical industry is so dynamic? Stay tuned and do not go away. Ladies and gentlemen, you welcome back to ZTV on a special program, the entertainment show in the afternoon. I have with me JQ, Jeff Quay, and Abraham. Abraham Pinto. They are here with me in the studios to talk about the very important issues and indeed they've made a very wonderful relation to the viewers to also help the musical industry in Ghana so that our brothers and sisters who have taken it upon themselves to entertain and promote the Ghanaian culture will not be retired in destitution or in abject poverty. Uh, let me come back to you. The music industry is now becoming the open for all industry where the proper engineers because of some financial constraints the up and coming musicians would like to go to somebody who cannot do proper production but add two big two words to promote to make a music. What is your take on that? Yeah, um, I think this is one thing that um, affected the industry. In a positive and a negative way. The positive way is that it's making see more artists come out. Some artists who are now like legends in Ghana wouldn't have come out if they, in their debut album they had to record with all the people like us who have so much. You understand? So it's opening the gateway for you know talents to, to come about. It is also giving chance to new producers and engineers to experiment with software because they know that oh now okay artists we didn't really have to do like the likes that we know but you know they can also sneak because as you see so so and so has made a hit and he is like you know new like you so that is the positive side and the negative side of it is that it is also killing the industry so much somehow because when you listen to sound the quality of sound you know get compromised you know the um, the fusion of instruments and the whole music in totality you can listen and you know this is like an amateur production you know these people, most of these people right now because of technology like you said you don't, you don't even have to play keyboard or guitar to be a producer anymore. They just get some softwares that you, you use your computer keyboard to play the sound. 
So all you need is your ear, and these things are not trading. How can you play your concern on some of these things? Mm. You know, so these things is also affecting the industry. These actually these some of these new producers. No disrespect, some are very very good, but most of these people are those people that are killing the industry. Yeah, that, that, that's why I'm asking to know mm -hmm. if uh, by adding two. Three bits mm -hmm. to create a whole five minutes mm -hmm. production of mm -hmm. music. Mm -hmm. He's doing well for our enterprise. Yeah, yeah, but as I said, is in both is in both ways. There is the there is the there is the, the good way aspect and the bad. Is the good and the bad aspect. It's the good and the bad. But how is it yeah. affecting you yeah. as a guitarist? I think it's really affecting us as an instrumentalist. Not probably not me, but mm -hmm. maybe a percussionist. Mm -hmm. Um, who also have mm -hmm. a whole percussion set, mm -hmm. the shakers and everything, mm -hmm. and play it live. Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes go to some of the studios and um, you go and do some work and you could hear something. Say, oh my God, I wish I could play guitar on this song. Mm -hmm. And then the pro producer will tell you, the person, the artist, says he or she doesn't have money. So you just, yeah. uh, um, excuse me to say in my language, but we are share money. They say that you know, we just put everything in there for, for us to and then just get it. And then it doesn't really bring out the quality, like what we need in the song. It's really killing the industry. And sometimes, some way, helping like my big brother said, you know. So we just- but really Don't we think that if that is going to be the case, that is where we have to employ the services of the executive producers. That maybe they groom mm -hmm. and produce a tight music. That you see, you see so it goes back to what I said, because yeah. You know, if they are, if, if Sony is in Ghana and Sony wants to uh, record Kujinchi, Kujinchi is doing well with by incorporating uh, live musicians into what they are. It's going to get bigger and bigger. It's going to get bigger. If, so, what I mean is, if there is a publisher, like a record company there, of course, some of these things are going to be met. But we live in an enterprise whereby, as far as my industry is concerned, where hit life right now as we speak. You can barely go to the market and buy a hip life um, CD. Why? They don't pro produce hip life CDs anymore. Like, some are there, but it wasn't like back in the days. Mm -hmm. Right now, it is singles. Yeah. And most of the songs, the videos you watch here, that is what the artists have. If you say, oh, I saw this video of this artist, what is the album? They'll tell you, no, there's no album. But High Life and Co are doing. This is because the artists can afford all the producers. Mm. You know, they just now because they are financing themselves. And sometimes it's funny, somebody will tell you when we listen to American music and we compare it to Ghana music, like the sound wise, yeah. we are not doing a good job. There is no there are no accredited government institutions or GBS, Ghana education institutions in Ghana that train sound engineering, I'm telling you. So Ghanaians must appreciate what what I, I, I have somebody on the line uh, and uh, hello. Hello? 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 Good afternoon. Hello? Good afternoon. Can you please turn down Hello. the volume of your set, please? Hi, good afternoon. Yeah, your name and where are you calling from? Hello? Hello, caller. Hello? Yes. Uh, before the caller comes in, you were talking about uh, the kind yeah, of training that. Yeah, hello. Uh, hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Your name and where you calling from? Good afternoon. Afternoon. Where are you calling from? Kindly turn down the volume of your set. Yes, JQ. Yeah, like that is what I was saying. So some way, somehow, it affects what we do now. If if we do our best, somebody you know becomes a sound engineer to or a producer, and an artist want to record, and the artist comes and you're like, okay, if you want this kind of production, this kind of this, how much is good? Like here, I'm just reacting to some things, and you'll be like, oh, master. Just take this, you know, it's super. Just do, just take this and, and just do it. Just, you know, so most of, not a producer. Yeah, yeah so just, yeah, so most of the songs you hear, sometimes it's not that maybe, um, like the production didn't really go well because the people involved the but 
at least that affordability. You know, and they will come telling you, maybe you will say, give me X amount. So we deliver. They will say, Master, uh, <laughs> like we say, if you can't afford this amount, like he's saying, yeah. like a song you can hear needs a guitar. And then you tell the others, they will like, Master, Master, you don't follow Gamboka and So these are some of the things that kills the illness. It's very sad. Well, listeners, viewers, this is it. You saw on Zip TV. And if you want to join in the conversation, the number is to call. It's 02032. 903190 I repeat 0203290 but if you call kindly turn down the volume of your radio uh, your TV set and listen to the sound that comes from your headset the headset that you are using you can join us live in the studio and talk about an important issue that is really affecting the Ghanaian music industry share your views with them because they are listening and your views will be taken on board uh, this program is sponsored by solar multimedia and avec Dre. they are the sponsors of this program uh, but before we go on now I've now learned that somebody can bring a music or a project in the studio and tell the, produ the producer for the for the so what then Pinto will sit gathering the air. How do you think this is killing our industry and it's not making breeding big musicians international even though we are making some marks? Like I said before, um, I think it's we need a lot that my brother said it before. Man. We need some like we need people to to encourage the, the up and coming that you need to be ready to produce a song you need to be ready not it's not about writing a song it's not about you want to go to the studio and sing a song that you've written it's a it's a broad thing it's, it's that's why we say it's, it's a show this is something that is the show aspect or whatever you have and then the business aspect of it so you have to do it and do it well you know because it's really killing us it's really killing the industries sometimes we might you might think yeah we're going up yes of course we're doing but in some angles we're going down like my big brother said you compare your sound you compare whatever we're playing to whatever is being playing the western world and it's like no we're playing excuse me to say rubbish but meanwhile it's not like that we have guys in there who can do better who can who can do better but because, because of financial really restraint it doesn't uh, really but matter. let me ask do we have business producers as far as the music industry is concerned that an artist is there he'll be managed by a commercial a businessman who will have his marketing team together with the advertising team with everything just as a business managing a particular artist a recording artist paying yeah, all the is. bills in the studios making sure that he has a percentage of whatever that is the sales and executive producer so that is the but one. are they really doing it as they're supposed to be done that is uh, what that is what i prevent from yeah. <laughs> that is what i say like presently we don't have so much executive producers in ghana what we have in ghana now is promoters most of the songs you are hearing right now on radio and on the tv produced mostly by the artists you see themselves so now what we have in ghana now is promoters who through events like telecom like mtn in ghana like vodafone they will throw an event and pay you some money you understand but the executive production as we know like the business aspect where so we have we don't have executive but we have so the executive producers now are the artists but then they they choose managers the artists appoint their own managers and most of the time they prefer managers who are radio presenters because you know payula can go down because they have friends and they hook up so that is in ghana right now artists are their own executive producers we have managers i manage a couple of artists and then we have um, promoters who through the event organizers who through those ones are there so the reason why artists won't worry himself to do a cd and spend so much money in getting 10 songs recorded is that they keep one song for a promoter to call them and pay them so much amount so they keep doing same i've had my last my last caller is on the line with me hello good afternoon 
high gloss and high you. Yeah, and some time, like mm. some season, you know, came out as a song that crossed over to other parts of the world. Mm. You know, so many factors determine go into the you know making a song, a song. go international. Mm. So it's a lot of things. It's a lot like publishing is you you this was series that we are talking about. Where were they based? They were in the UK. How did they start? You see, was Osi Bizar probably from, from somewhere in, in, in some village in Ghana? If they were from some village in Ghana, <laughs> it would have been very, very, very difficult. Difficult for them to you understand. But they were here already, the regulations are in place and all this. This is our industry is old but not that, that old compared to like like Britain, America and some the Caribbean, some parts of the world. Mm. You know, we are still we are still you know in that striving to, striving to you know put these things in place. So in fact with the with the international thing it is it is very 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 poetry and cool. They go to America to perform, they go elsewhere to perform. Do you say they, they've gone international? You go there they are playing to Ghanaians. Yeah. Yeah so a lot of things a lot of things should be done. Yeah. Pinto, finally what do you have for us? on the music going internationally or one day we may be hearing Pinto is one of the biggest record label playing the guitar for a music a musician yeah like i'm uh, what i would love to say is that as a matter of fact the style of the kind of music we portray also makes us international like yeah hello that we talked about yeah and uh, before hello. you continue hello i've got a caller on the line hello yeah, hello. Good afternoon. Yeah, hello. Good afternoon. Is it Zip TV? Yes, yeah, Zip TV. May I know whom I'm speaking with? Right, my name is Ben. Ben, where are you calling yeah, from? I'm, I'm calling from Wimbledon. Wimbledon? Right. All right, Ben. Wimbledon. What do you well, have? As a matter of fact, you know, yeah, well, as a matter of fact, I don't really know what's going on now. I just tuned into um, Zip TV and I saw you having a live show. So Thank can you, you please much. tell me, I mean, who? What's going on here so I can join in? What, what, what I've is? got JQ in the studios, a music producer and an engineer of all time in Ghana who have seen through by music transformation from the oh. Jama. He's gone through the musical transformation and reformation, taking him through mm -hmm. the Jama, uh, Jama and Palongo to through to the Azonto, the nowadays Azonto that has been played on air. He was right. brain behind most of the music that we hear on the radio. And I have a pinto a young Guinean based in London guitarist who is also in the studio who played the Yam Ponsa to the folks on Zip TV to have known that we have Guineans who still are the roots of our music in diaspora. Alright. Okay, well, uh, just a quick question, yeah. I'm not really, you know, um, I'm not really a music person, you know, just forgive me about that one. I'm not really a music person. What I want to find out is what is the future of, you know, that hip life, you know, in, in Canada. The future of hip life? Because it's, it, looks, it looks like it just turned out to be like a trend, you know, everybody just, you know, you know, wakes up in the morning and then, you know, just start mixing up something and that's it, I'm going to, there we go, let's dance. Yeah, the music <laughs> engineer himself is here, he will explain that to you. He said the future mm. of the hip life is just like a trend, everybody wakes up in the morning and here we go, I don't go, 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 go. Explain that to him. Um, <laughs> that's funny how he said it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, hip life has a future if you know the history of it. I mean, yeah. it's come a long way. You know, hip life wasn't back in the days what it is now. You know, now we see hip life, you know, going you know beyond the shores of uh, Ghana affecting Africa, even hip life being recognized by DMT for the first time in the history of, of our music as a country, not even as, as just hip life. So that that should say that you know hip life is you know not something that just wake up in the morning. Boom, 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 boom. It's something that the world listens to, the world go and they and they check it out and all that. So it has a future. Now there are more people. Now if you if you go to a, a, like any home in Ghana and somebody is trying to be a hip life artist, it is not like in a time where they discourage you and all that. Like, because the parents can see some successful hip life artists on screens and in the news making headmates. 
So if life has come a long way, it has a future, and trust me, and it's yet to and stay. Yet to stay. <laughs> ben, right? You you had the yeah, uh, man himself telling yeah. you that yeah. life is here to stay. It's got a bright mm-hmm. future. Okay, because um, the, the the reason why I was asking this question is that you know I'm just trying to you know compare hip life, hip life to um ha, um what is it called hip hop, right? Yes. Hip hop is it, what are two different things, but clearly you can see that hip hop is dying out now, gradually. Yeah, in America, hip hop is going. Mm-hmm. It's going. They are now reforming it where you hear chorus being sung in it and you hear oh, yeah, it. instrumental. Ben, you know oh, what? Wow. Thank you very much and do join us every day of the week and Zip TV. Mm-hmm. We are here to stay. We come in with fantastic programs. This is one of our programs. Many more to come. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You are. Bye. Yes. Uh, I think we we're going somewhere, but the time we don't have much time. So I would have wished you play the keyboard, the piano for people to have. But we will have a one-to-one interview whereby you ask to your score. And if you want to record, no matter where you are, Solar Multimedia can get you straight into London to do recordings. And JQ is here for six weeks. Six weeks, JQ will be here in till February, the end of February. So if you want to record, do get in touch with Solar Multimedia on 02038-531-9251. Call Solar Multimedia and we'll process everything for you to be recorded in the studios of Solar Multimedia. JQ is here. But before you go, I would want one of my young concerns from uh, Pinto, Abraham Pinto, who is a young Guinean based uh, guitarist in the diaspora. Around you to take us to the final game. This is it. If you don't hear us from again, catch us same time next week on Zip TV on afternoon entertainment show on Zip TV. My name is Aldo Adam. We are to be here. We thank you very much for bringing us uh, on this program. The executive producer Mary and our technical producer Ola Olympio. I thank you very much. Uh, I had. I had JQ, uh, Jeff Quay, and Abraham Pinto. I'm out of here. After this, bye bye. Yeah, I'm gonna give you the beat. Just.